Uh, first off, it started because we went to the IHOP across the street and had ourselves a nice scramble yesterday after work, and Dave was marveling how, how, how nice it was sitting in this booth we all enjoyed. And I thought, yeah, I've never had a bad time in a booth. And I realized booth is one of those things like urinal. You only see them out you know, in commercial use, but there's no reason why you can't have a urinal and a booth at your house. I would, I, I have a urinal at my house, and I love staring at it while I whiz in the sink, ironically. <laughs> I know you thought, thought you said I was going to use it, but I had a urinal at my old house, actually, and I used to use that thing all the time, and when the guys came over to play basketball, they would all use the urinals. As a matter of fact, I had two of them, and it's nice. It's liberating. It's a novelty thing. It's like when you're a kid and you have one of your, I was going to say my parents, but, <laughs> again, they didn't buy anything that plugged in. That was their rule or took batteries. But How you, would I know that? Yes, yeah, so generous. So we went to, uh, you'd go to your friend's house, and Dad had an old-time popcorn machine or something in the living room. Novelty. The idea that you're eating popcorn at home, movie-type popcorn at home. I don't know why that was such a thrill, but it is. The booth is the same thing. Put a booth in your kitchen. You'll love the hell out of that booth. Now, people say, well, one guy slides in, and then the other guy's got to take a leak, so you got to slide out to let him out. It's worth the extra effort. You have a good time in a booth. No one's had a bad time in a booth. I would argue that if I ever started a private therapy practice, I would get rid of the sofa and put a booth there. The entire family sitting around. Oh, everyone molested everyone, everyone hates everyone, everyone's envious of everyone. And then I put them in the booth, and it's all smiles and laughs. Pass the maple syrup, stepdaddy. Sorry for molesting you, son. No biggie. Now, where's that creamery butter? Put everyone in a booth. So I had a booth, we had a booth at my old apartment. It was uh, the year... Ooh, 1985, maybe 1986. I was 19 years old. We were uh, fresh out of high school. I graduated North Hollywood High, and then I graduated into the garage at my dad's house in North Hollywood. And I lived there for a few years, probably my senior year in high school and then a year afterward. And uh, stepmom was putting some pressure on pops. Let's get the ace man out. You know, my dad. Spineless wuss. Just curled up in the balls. He sleeps in a basket. He has no spine. Now, a lot of people say, Corolla, <laughs> you're calling your dad a puss? You're saying your dad has no spine? You're saying it on the radio? Where's he live? Does he live in a city that doesn't receive your program? No. He lives out here in L.A. He could listen. He doesn't. Therefore, I can say whatever I want. I call old man a puss. No problema. Now. I get out of the uh, garage with some help from the stepmom and the puss of a dad I have. Now, you also had a tin in there, a popcorn tin, yes? I uh, I didn't have many family members. There's not a lot of Corollas. I think I have a uncle on the East Coast who I've met maybe once. He has some kids. I don't know what their names are. I'm not sure. The Corolla's not a tight-knit, not, not tight-knit group. We didn't talk to people. I, I'm, I'm, it's unclear how many family members are Corollas and where they live and what their sexes are. And if they have kids, I really have no idea. We were never, you know, like I said, my own family, my immediate family, my, my parents were sort of lukewarm on their own kids. Imagine how much effort they put into us getting to know the folks that lived in Philadelphia or their siblings. So I didn't really know anybody. I did have out here Vince and Pat. Cousin Vince and Cousin Pat. Not quite sure who exactly they were, how they fit in either, but they were out here. Now, they're very generous, those folks. So generous that every year for my birthday, they would get me a greeting card with slots in it, and I would get a nickel for every age I was. So at age, well, it doesn't sound like much. You're 11. You got 55 cents. Okay. But you understand, this is 1979. That 55 cents could buy an RV or <laughs> a vacation buy? home. Yeah, 55 cents was a lot of money. You could buy almost two-thirds of a gallon of gas, you know, back then with that 55 cents. But, again, that's when I was 11. Later on, you know, as I got 15 and 60, well, <laughs> you do the math. And I think at a certain point, to be fair to them, they may have jumped from nickel to dime. So, I mean, I was, I was set. I, I, wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't say I never had to work again. 
<laughs> but let's just say I was comfortable. If you invested wisely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I didn't, you know, freak out and just have it all go up my nose, I was, I was comfortable just living off the interest of that dollar ten. So, for graduation, when I graduated high school, <laughs> and again, these people, uh, I don't know if they were rich, but they spent like it. They, uh, when I graduated high school, they got me a decorative popcorn tin. It had it had the it had the popcorn broken up into three sections. There was the cheesy popcorn, there was the regular, and the caramel popcorn it had the little cardboard division in it. And uh, I got to say, it had pictures on the outside of the tin. I mean, there must have been twelve ounces of popcorn in that tin. I it had to set them back. I, I didn't even, I, I mean, I'm a, I was embarrassed to ask at the time. I'm sure it was a pretty penny. This I is mean, for your high school graduation, the tin. The, the t- well, it had popcorn in it. It wasn't and just the okay. tin. So <laughs> I don't know if you buy them separately. And, Three oh, flavors. No cousin nice. Pat loaded it herself. But, again, extravagant stuff. I mean, I had guys with brand new cars with big bows on the roof looking at the ace man carrying his popcorn tin with, with a, just burning a hole in my back with envy. Sure. And not only, and this popcorn tin was a gift that keeps giving because when I was done eating the popcorn, I was able to use it to defecate in because there was no bathroom out in the garage and I would get locked out of the house periodically and, you know. You know, nature calls. What are you going to do? He pooped in a popcorn tin. Decorative popcorn Wait, tin. Wait, was it still separated into thirds when you pooped in it? Wow. That's right, because I have three different kinds of poo. Sweet? Sweet, sweet poo. Well, at least I think it is. Not everyone shares my opinion on that. Cheese? Cheesy, cheesy poo. And regular. Caramel. Regular. Butter, now, extra salt. Could you have gone into the house to use the facilities? I could have, after a certain hour, the door would get locked, and I couldn't, I couldn't get in. No key. I probably had one at one time and then lost it, and maybe I was too ashamed to say I'd lost it, or I'd lost it, and uh, this was the punishment. It was, it's all it's all a blur. Either way, I was in the garage. They didn't, I didn't have running water in the garage, but I didn't have the popcorn tin. But let's not digress. <laughs> I don't like going Fiddle back me. to that place. Animal. Well, it's not like it didn't have a lid, David. I'm what sorry. What was he going to do? He was locked out. I don't know how you don't live in a, a mental home growing up. <laughs> growing up sorry, like Lord Fauntleroy. We didn't have bathrooms when we grew up, all right? Or, Dave, did you just have a servant cup his hand while you made a BM into it? It's unclear how you grew up. The point is, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't the highfalutin Beaver Falls. This is the Badlands of North Hollywood. So, we moved into this apartment, me and my buddy, the Wheeze, and not a moment too soon. Uh, Over there, again, three-bedroom on Laurel Canyon. Had uh, three guys living in it, me and the the Wheeze, sharing the futon. And uh, one day, he came home on a Sunday night, about 5 o'clock, and he said, I was just driving in an alley behind the Ventura, behind the Blah Blah Cafe on Ventura Boulevard. There's a booth out in the back. I don't know if they're throwing it out. I don't know if they're reupholstering it. I don't know if they're moving it, but it's in the back, and the place is closed, so let's go get it. It was fair game. Anything you drag out into an alley, you can pick up and take home. That's all. It's not quite stealing. Now, if it's trash and it's out on the curb, well, then it's definitely not stealing. If it's inside the facility, it is stealing. If it's in an alley, little gray area there. So it's up for grabs. So he said, we got to go get this, baby. we got to use your pickup truck. we got to do it. I said, Don, that's uh, that's good, except for bad timing, because uh, earlier on Sunday I was playing a little pickup football over at the old North Hollywood High with some of the old buddies, and I think I hurt my knee. I think I hurt it badly. I played 11 years of organized wear a helmet, wear pads, football, never hurt a knee ever. And I was playing a little pickup, just, you know, a little tackle football, but I was just running in the open field, heard a pop. Pulled myself out of the game. Knee started swelling a little bit. And I said, uh, I got to get out of here. Hopped the fence and walked all the way home with my knee that had popped out of place moments earlier. But I got home. I didn't put any ice on it or anything. I just said, I don't think I'm good for this. And he said, you puss. That that thing's out there. It's not going to last for long. You got a truck. I don't know who else I can get. Let's go get it. I said, fine. So we got in the pickup truck. We drove to the alley. 
we loaded this huge booth, and I mean, this thing was ten foot by nine foot, and it was you know the red vinyl, and it had the whole the whole diner type booth, and we threw it in the back of the pickup truck, and we drove it back to the apartment. But the apartment was on the second floor, and we had a tight set of stairs that went up, and then it dog legged and it made a turn, and then I said, I said, Donnie, my knee, it's killing me, man. I got to tell you, I heard a pop. I mean, I mean, I may have really injured it, and he said. Are you going to puss out now? <laughs> Would you get behind this booth and start pushing? I said, Don, this thing's got to weigh 400 pounds. It's nine feet long. It's eight feet across. I, he said, start pushing. Yeah, well, you're twice his size, by the way. Too. Yeah, so he got up front. And he acted like the rudder, sort of guiding the front of it. And I shoved whatever weight I had behind the booth. I start, We start chugging up the stairs. And I said, Don, my knee, it's killing me, man. And he said, keep pushing. You're not getting out of this. <laughs> I love the difference. This is the difference between men and women. When, when a woman says, I'm not feeling well. I think I may have had some food poisoning. I think my heart, I feel, honey, sit down. Do you want me to call somebody? We should call somebody. Then all the other girls huddle. Who's going to drive her to the hospital? With a guy, hey, puss, start pushing. <laughs> the thing about guys is any injury or sickness is thought of as an excuse to get out of something. So as a guy, when you go, look, I, I can't make it. I'm feeling, oh, yes, you can. Get the hell in there. You're not getting out of this. Jeez, my knee is killing me. Yeah, right. All right? My ass is killing me for your, from your excuses. Now get busy and start pushing that booth. <laughs> so I start shoving the booth, and we, get, and we get it up to the landing. But the booth is so big, we can't get it through the front door of the apartment. We have to take the door off the hinges. Then I have to take the screen door off the hinges, and the whole time I'm saying, Donnie, Donnie, my knee is killing me. I I swear I think I broke my knee, and he says, keep pushing. So I take the door off, and I take the screen off, and we try to pivot the thing around, but the landing's not big enough, and there's a railing, and there's a little roof over it. And then we have to push it back down the stairs because we can't get it through the door. And I shove it back in the truck. And the wheeze drives it to the alley behind the jack in the box, the same one my buddy Ray stuck his ass out full of water a few years earlier and tries to squirt the guy <laughs> who was in the drive through And he takes a hammer, and he dismantles the whole booth in the alley of the jack in the box and he throws it back in the truck. And by this time, I said, Donnie, seriously, i got to go lie down. And I go upstairs, and I lie down, and Donnie works in the wee hours of the night, bringing the booth in now piece by piece that he's dismantled in the alley, like a little beaver, putting it back together in our kitchen where? It fit perfectly, where I later bi built a half-circle table that I laminated with some beautiful white laminate on the top and where we drank many a bottle of tequila just sitting at the booth. That booth, come, people, we'd have booth parties. People would come over, pile into the booth, crank up the stereo, and start the boozing. No better place to get loaded or to eat breakfast than a booth. Again, everybody, I say, you want to know if you have room in your house for a booth? I'll say it this way. Why don't you have room? I didn't work that one out. You can't not afford to not have. Well, you know what I'm saying. Get the yes. booth, God damn it. So we put it in, and uh, Donnie worked all night long, and uh, I woke up the next morning, and my knee was the size of a cassava melon. The reason we're playing this song is that's another story where we're testing out speakers we got from a guy in a van and our landlord came over. But I don't want to get into that just yet. I woke up the following morning. My knee was huge. It was black and blue. I later on had surgery on that knee. And then I later on got into my epic street fight with that same knee that had the stitches in it. But that's where the knee was blown out. And I'm sure aggravated. Now, listen, I'm no orthopedic surgeon, but I do know if you blow your knee out playing football, you should probably elevate it and put ice on it, not move heavy furniture up flights of stairs for an evening. But that's the difference between men and women. And by the way, that booth... It's in the Smithsonian, right next to my decorative popcorn tin. Mm -hmm. The whole wing. And Archie Bunker's chair. Unclear whether he defecated in it or not. I don't care. I still enjoyed the program.